everybody, this is Kelly, the nurse practitioner at The Wellness Way. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about your GI system, gastrointestinal system, your belly and your gut. That's what we're going to talk about today. And the focus is kind of going to be why the elderly worry about their bowels so much. This slide presentation is going to help you understand why the bowels are so important. So first, in case you haven't met me before, I'm a nurse practitioner. I've been a nurse practitioner for 16 years and have been a registered nurse for 20. I am very passionate about prevention and making sure that people don't progress into the disease state that they can with unhealthy lifestyles. I believe in holistic health and taking care of you. I believe in finding out the reasons for your illness. So let me work with you and we will figure that out. I have to first tell you about the GI system. So it goes from the mouth all the way through your stomach, through your bowels, and out the, out the back. That's the whole system. It's one long tube with specialized regions to break down food into their building blocks so we can absorb the nutrition and nourish our bodies. So I want to ask you, have you ever had problems with gas? Maybe some bloating, constipation? Diarrhea, maybe you've been told you have irritable bowel syndrome. Does any of that sound familiar? Well, it's not normal. I want to ask you a little bit more. Have you ever had acne? Ever break out in red rashes on your face? Dry skin? Ever have a problem with yeast infections? Ever get asthma? Brain fog? Confusion? Joint pain? When you shouldn't? Ever have mood problems, behavior issues, depression, or anxiety? Why am I asking you about all of those conditions? Because they're all related to your gut. Every one of them. If we don't have a healthy gut, we will not have a healthy body. So there is a gut-brain connection. About 90% of the fibers in the vagus nerve, and you can look that up, go ahead and Google it, vagus nerve. It's a nerve that carries information or connects the brain to the gut. About 90% of the fibers in that vagus nerve carry information from the gut to the brain, okay, 90%. It's not 90% from the brain to the gut, telling your gut what to do. The gut takes that information. Your food is information, and it sends the message to the brain to know what to do next, okay? In your gut, in your, in your bowels, is the nervous system and the immune system. So we're going to talk a little bit about that because that's the key to understanding why the bowels are so important. The nervous system, the gut has about 100 million neurons that communicate information about what you're eating. Again, that gut-brain connection. The enteric nervous system, gut to brain, uses more than 30 neurotransmitters. Ever heard of neurotransmitters before? You can Google that too. But look them up and think about happy hormones, sad hormones, or excitatory hormones, give you lots of energy and um, maybe don't let you sleep, or hormones that are bringing you down, you're so tired, you can't get out of bed. Okay, those are neurotransmitters. The majority of the neurotransmitters are made in your gut and send messages to your brain. So sometimes when you have, think you have a brain issue, it's really a gut issue because the hormones that you need are not being made. Or there's too much of one, not enough of another, and there's an imbalance. Is that making sense? So the gut and the immune system are also very important. 70 to 80% of the immune system relies in the gut. The immune system, do you know what that is? That's how we fight infection. That maintains the integrity of our body helps us from getting sick with colds and flu and viruses, helps us from breaking down our own system and getting dramatic disease. So the immune system is extremely important. Again, 70 to 80% within your gut. That's where it's housed. That's where it works the most. To prevent harmful substances from entering the bloodstream, that's what the gut does. So the lining from the mouth all the way to the backside protects your body from anything you eat, from whatever toxins, poisons, food you put into your system. The lining of the gut prevents the bad stuff from getting into your system. Unless the gut's not working right, unless the gut that's supposed to be nice and tight has gaps, and then it lets the bad stuff through. 
then the bad stuff gets into your bloodstream and you have some of those symptoms that I mentioned before. Not just belly symptoms, but skin issues, depression issues, joint issues, all those things because contaminants or big proteins or toxins are leaking into your bloodstream when the gut's not in good health. Some of the things um, that the the gut prevents from getting into your bloodstream would be bacteria, undigested food, viruses, funguses, parasites even, and toxins. So we have to think about what makes the belly go bad. How, how does the belly go down? Did you do anything specific to make it stop working the right way? Not intentionally, but once you learn about some of the things that go awry, you can help do things to get the integrity back and to improve it or to prevent a problem then in the rest of your family or friends that you know. So sometimes it starts with offending foods and irritants. What do I mean by that? We actually all have a lot of allergies that we've probably never been aware of, okay? Um, there's allergies that give you that acute reaction, like if I was allergic to bees and I was stung by a bee, I would blow up. I would, my lips would sell, swell, my throat would swell, and I would be having an anaphylactic reaction. People can have that with foods, strawberries, grass, um, apples, things like that. Those are acute reactions. But we also have delayed reactions. So we eat a food and it stays in our system. It causes an irritation. It may be breaking down or causing some damage in our gut, but then it also contributes to some of those other symptoms that we talked about. But it lasts in your system for about 20 days. So if I'm allergic to wheat and I eat it today, I may not notice symptoms till tomorrow or maybe in four days or maybe if the symptoms started, they'd be lingering for 20 days. How would I ever relate that to the wheat unless I had it tested? So that's an example. One of the things, offending foods, things that are an allergen to our system or things that are an irritant to the actual lining of the gut. Have you ever heard of dysbiosis? So that's a big funny word that just means the normal gut flora, so the good bacteria and bad bacteria, are out of whack. Okay, there's too much of the bad stuff and it's not a normal balance. That starts to wreak havoc in your GI system and it starts to break it down, make gaps where there shouldn't be gaps. So bacteria overgrowth, a yeast overgrowth, or maybe a parasite infection. And when we talk about parasites, it's not just going out of the country, going to Africa and picking up a weird parasite from being out of the country. We actually have a lot of parasites that are on our normal food. But if your GI system is working well, if the stomach is really acidic, it breaks down those little parasites and they never cause your body a problem. If the gut's not working, they can manifest in there and you may never even know it until we test for it. The other thing that you may be surprised, maybe some of you know, medications can hurt us too. They can hurt the lining of your stomach and impact the digestion and impact the integrity of the lining. So things like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, so NSAIDs, that means ibuprofen, aspirin, they can be really irritating to your stomach. You gotta take those with food. Antibiotics can really goof up that normal flora, okay? Um, antacids, who takes a Tums sometimes because they feel like they have some indigestion? If you're taking antacids on a regular basis, you're throwing off the pH in your stomach and that is causing a problem. Having a very poor diet, meaning not very nutritious, drinking a lot of alcohol, or how about stress? We never give stress enough credit, but stress can cause you stomach problems too. So all of those things that I just listed are things that make the belly go bad, and we need to start to control them. If we talk about the good bacteria um, in your gut, they really help to maintain your immune function in your stomach. They aid in the ability to absorb nutrients, and they actually start some enzymes working to uh, make some vitamins be more active when the food comes into your system. So they're very important. The immune system in the gut is always looking for scavengers, it's always looking for foreign things, and then it's also in charge of battling those foreign things and knocking them down and getting them out of the system. So we have to keep those organisms alive and well to keep that belly good.
Did you know that all of the bacteria in your gut would actually fill about a half gallon container? That's a lot. That's really a lot when you think about your stomach is really the size of your fist right there. And so a half gallon of, of fluid is all the bacteria in your belly. But it's good stuff. We need it there or we wouldn't be able to survive. The other important fact about the gut bacteria is that our first interaction with our mothers is the first and biggest donation of bacteria that we get in life. Just being born through the birth canal gives us a lot of good bacteria and gives us exposure to other bacteria that boost our immune system. Your immune system can then recognize it and then when it sees it again, it's ready to fight it. So think about that with little kids. What do little kids always do? If they see something, they pick it up, where do they put it first? They put it in their mouth or up their nose, don't they? And they're experiencing it. And that's okay because they're getting some bacteria. It's not enough to harm them, but it is enough to stimulate their immune system to say, hey, that's some bad bacteria. We don't want that in our system and it's ready to fight. And if it sees it again, it knows what it is and it can destroy it right away. So some tips or things that we do to keep your gut working well are replacing important things, reducing bad things, and restoring the normal integrity. So we can reduce carbohydrates that feed the back, bad bacteria. So if we have a lot of bad bacteria, we don't want to give it energy and food, right? We want to stop doing that. We want to reduce the sugar and the artificial sweeteners that we're eating because that's just going to promote the bad bacteria. We want to find out if we had food allergies and then we need to avoid those allergies because remember they're an irritation and they get into our bloodstream. So we need to cut those out but first you have to find out what they are. If you have a problem digesting food, if you ever have stool that still has food in it, you can tell what it is. It means that you're not digesting it well. So you may need some adjustments in those enzymes or need a little bit more acid in the stomach to help break down that food. You may need to replace some of your normal nutrients if you're depleted on them. Things like vitamin B12, folate, vitamin D is extremely important, and magnesium. And then we need to think about restoring that normal bacteria. Fermented foods is a great way to restore and keep a normal balance. And if you don't eat many fer fermented foods, like kombucha or sauerkraut, and there's many more things out there, then we need to consider taking some probiotics, again, to keep that normal flora balance. So I hope those tips were helpful. I hope you have a better understanding of the GI system and why it is so important to maintain the GI so you can have a healthy, normal life. If you have questions, give us a call or come and see us if you're having problems. So, Thank you. Have a good day.